All right, welcome back. We start this segment with our Tri-State Office Furniture Tweet of the Day. Pat Narduzzi, proud of another one of his players, Brian O'Neill. And boy, what a great career he's turned out to have in Minnesota. I remember him when he was first here. I don't know what year it was, but uh, he was a tight end. They moved him around. He got on the offensive line. And now, Chris, look at this. Five years, $92.5 million for the right tackle of the Minnesota Vikings. Pretty impressive. Or a $92.5 million bigger contract than T.J. Watt uh, <laughs> currently has in his negotiation. You know what else about Brian O'Neill? Cheap, uh, cheap Watt heat aside there. He is a winner of a very prestigious trophy, Bob, when he mm -hmm. was at Pitt. Are you familiar with this trophy? No. This award? No. He won the Peisman Trophy, which is only eligible for offensive linemen who score a touchdown. You'll recall he was oh. on, he you know, rumbled with one, that yes. little throwback play. Uh, he <laughs> won the prestigious Peisman Trophy Award. So he goes from that, the Peisman, to a great Pitt career, and now big money in the NFL. Props to him. And if I could be serious for 10 seconds, because the Peisman was a real thing, uh, no joke there. This is the kind of thing Pat Narduzzi absolutely should be putting out there. You know what I mean? It's just like Nick Saban talking about how Bryce Young's approaching seven figures in NIL. If you are Pat Narduzzi, you have to seize on every single instance of a Pitt player succeeding in the pros to try to get as many kids to come to Pitt as you possibly can. Yeah, and right now they have a long list of success in the NFL, and they should tout that as much as possible. Let's go to the lines. Bill and McKees Rocks is first in line one. Hey, Bill, what's up? So, uh, T.J. Watt goes, I, I, if, you know, he don't want to sign. I would just franchise him for the next two years and drag this out, and uh, that's what I would do. I would pull the money off the table and franchise him for two years. Well, I mean, Why? that's certainly at their option, but I th they don't want to do that. And, again, I think this is, a, this is the biggest deal the Steelers will ever hand out. And, and I, to me, they're not shying away from the money. It just comes down to the guaranteed money. And while I what, understand – Bob, what happens – Go ahead. What happens if they franchise him and then it comes to a point in time where they can't get a deal done with Minka? You can't franchise two players at once. That's what an astute PM team caller pointed out yesterday that we hadn't even bothered to think of. If it comes to a point where Minka Fitzpatrick has a great year and, and they just can't get deals done with either one of these guys, what are they going to do? Seriously. Well, I, like, I, first of all, I don't think... That is a plausible scenario that could arise. I think the money at safety is far less than what he's dealing with. I think they'll figure that out. But I still think it's going to get done. So I think, you know, we, we tend to talk about this every single day. And I know Bill's, uh, you know, to the point he's made his judgment already. But it, 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 we'll see how it turns out. And when it does, if it does, then all of this that we've been talking about won't matter. And, and I still believe from, from people that I rely on, I think they're going to get a deal done. So we'll see. But uh, Mink is going to be another one. But he has to have a good year. If he does... And he's going to be controlling a lot of what goes on there. And, uh, you know, he can dictate. Leverage is a big part of it. The only thing I was surprised about today is that leverage that T.J. Watt gave up. Because he could have, you know, and he could have done this from the very beginning of training camp if he wanted to. Uh, but kudos to him. He showed up. To your point, he's a good teammate. But at the same time, he gave up some leverage, didn't he? Yeah, he absolutely did. Uh, he, he truly did. And I don't know if it was a show of good faith or if he and his agent just kind of threw their hands up and, and said, you know what? You know, forget about this. I'm just going to go out there and play football. Uh, either way, like I said, good teammate, but you're right. He gave up leverage. I have a, can I just ask a hypothetical at least? Sure. Because you've got your sources, Bob, and I trust them. Hey, that they're, they're telling you they believe it's going to get done. I mean, they believe it's going to get done. The question I, I feel like we do have to ask at this juncture, because it's getting close enough now, what if it doesn't? I mean, what if we get to Sunday morning and he's not signed and there's nothing coming down the pike? That is going to be a dark cloud that hangs over this team all season long. And it's going to be for what? A guy who's top three defensive player in the NFL. Ben called him one of maybe the best player in the league, I think he said, or one of them. That's a little bit of hyperbole, but not that far off. For what? Saying, hey, we don't ever guarantee past the first year and we're not going to move off that. Did you see news tonight that the Packers have the same thing going with, I think, Aaron Jones? They broke off talks with Devontae Adams for the same basic reason. Right. I just do not understand why these two marquee franchises must be so obstinate about that one principle. I just they could think be it's taking very advantage of what is in the CBA. These players agreed to this. This is part of it, and the owners have an upper hand when it comes to this. So, you know, you can also look at J.J. Watt and see how his career has quickly changed because of injury. There are a lot of variables involved here. I think the Steelers are true. They want to get this done, but... Like everything, it takes two to, t to tango and get it done. And, uh, 
you know, we'll see. I thought they were a lot closer a couple of weeks ago, and I don't know what's happened that's changed. Don't have any idea, but we'll find out by the weekend. Let's go out to um, Paul in McKeesport on line number four. Hey, Paul, what's up? Hey, how you guys doing? Thanks for taking the call. Sure. I just have a simple question. If you can explain the difference between guaranteed money and signing bonus and how both of them affect the salary cap. Well, it's guaranteed is guaranteed. You can do it at the beginning. You can have, uh, you know, six months later, there could be more money. It's all guaranteed. However, the total package, like, for example, they're different. Bosa, I think, was $78 million guaranteed. Miles Garrett was more than that. It was 100 right? Is that what it was, $100 million? Garrett so, was, yeah, so Bosa was more guaranteed at signing. Garrett's was more guaranteed overall. The right. Steelers, to Paul's question, I think, more relevantly here, they'll do whatever their guarantee is in the form of a signing bonus that jacks up the cap, you know, that messes with the cap number, obviously. It affects it a certain right. way. But what they like to do is what they call rolling guarantees. And all you need to know about rolling guarantees is, yes, it is enormously likely that a player who would get a deal where there's rolling guarantees would see most of that money, if not all of it. But it is not ironclad, set in stone, in writing, you're getting it. And that is very, like, that is the crux of what Le'Veon Bell was after what T.J. Watt is after. They don't want rolling guarantees. They want real ones beyond that first year, and that is the pretty obvious sticking point here. All right, let's go out to Brian in Harmony before we go to a break. Brian, go ahead. How you doing? What's up? I have to ask you, uh, why would uh, Sidney Crosby in the uh, offseason not fix his arm up? Well, like we talked about, he had tried different methods to try to do it without surgery. Uh, and you can argue, and my only point about that is I tend to agree with Paul only in that he's been dealing with this for a long time. So they have to have tried a lot of things, Chris, along the way. And they finally came to this point where they say that's none of this is going to be as good as surgery, so we're going to go for surgery. I just wonder if they couldn't, uh, couldn't have come to the same conclusion maybe three, four weeks ago. That's all. But, you know, bottom I mean, line is. They could have. Go ahead. They could have, but real people in the same situation, I mean, real people will take, like, the give me a cortisone shot. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. if it's a knee replacement, but, hey, if I can avoid it, give me a shot that will numb me up for six months, things like that. I mean, I've got, I've got bone spurs on one of my toes, and I've already had, you know, foot doctors tell me, hey, Chris, get the cortisone shot if it comes to the surgery in this particular case. And I'm not saying that's the case with Crosby at all, but the surgery is worse than, than the problem right now <laughs> in terms of just how much pain it's going to cause you. So – I get people's frustrations. I think I would be a lot more on board with agreeing with those and sympathizing if he was going to miss 20 games of the regular season because they put this off. Yeah, it's not a bad time. Normally they need him late in the season, not so much early, and they have guys at the beginning who can help out there, at least for four games anyway. Malkin's going to be out longer term, so that's another issue. We've got to take a break. More calls on the way at 412-575-2600. This is your place to discuss sports every night of the week. It's the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. 